Hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you are new here. Don't forget to subscribe. I like to post about books and music, mostly Taylor Swift. This week I had a completely different video planned and I even filmed half of it yesterday, but it has to do with folklore and I just don't feel folklore-y. I'm so Midnight's Tunnel Vision. It's a really, really cool video idea that one of you guys actually requested a long time ago. I'll pick back up on it at a later date. It's just I'm not feeling inspired by it. I know you guys will really like it but I'm just gonna push it ahead more because we're getting so close to Midnight's it's become the only thing I can think about and I don't think you guys will mind an extra Midnight's related video knowing you will still get this folklore related one just farther down the line because we're all really Midnight centered right now. So I got this idea when I watched my friend Angie's video this morning. I collabed with her a little while back. I will link her video down in the description where she kind of talked through what she thought of the track names that were released so far like what she thinks they're gonna be about. And I thought that would be a really fun video to do because the last couple of new albums, in fact, the only ones that have come out that are new while I had my channel were all like surprise drops, folklore and evermore. So this is the first time I have like a couple weeks to sit on this before I actually get to hear these songs. I don't really think she's gonna release one ahead of time. I do believe Karma is going to be the lead single because of this post from Taylor Nation. I feel like this is a very obvious Easter egg. I just don't know if that's going to happen like after the album is released. I have a feeling it's going to be afterwards or maybe like the night it's released. We might get a music video. Kind of like how she did with Willow and Cardigan off of Folklore and Evermore. Let's just get into what I think of all of these tracks and what I think maybe they'll sound like. I will also discuss the era that I think each one is from, like what age she might have been when she had these sleepless nights. I'm still kind of divided on whether or not I think these are songs that were already written or if they're just songs that she wrote after the fact, maybe after going through potential vault songs or looking through old diaries like she did for the Lover albums. And it seems like a lot of people are very decisive on that and they go either one of two ways, like either she wrote these way back in the day or these are like new things about old feelings. And I just don't know. I mean, I think I'll have more of a clue once I hear the songwriting, whether it sounds like Young Taylor or like a more mature version. Let's just get into all of these. So there is an Instagram reel up on her profile of her explaining the song kind of how Lavender Haze means that warm fuzzy feeling of you being in love and you want to hold on to that feeling no matter what, regardless of like crazy tabloid rumors or any sort of weird press she gets. So this will probably be very personal and I feel like Taylor has said in the past that she doesn't like to write about fame because it's not very relatable, but I think she's found a very clever way of doing that in a way that's like applicable to different types of problems you can have, like the way she did it with peace, like would it be enough if I can never give you peace? To her it means like paparazzi will always be chasing her and her boyfriend but for a lot of other people it could mean whatever baggage that you have like would it be enough if I can't give you peace from these problems that I have would you still love me anyways so I think Lavender Hayes I feel like she's going to do the same clever thing where it's like she's not going to explicitly mention tabloids or things that are not very applicable to a lot of people. I feel like it will be like heavily leaning on like rumors and just outside speculation because we all have that. I mean there will always be people who want to give you some kind of unsolicited advice or jealousy surrounding your relationship so I think this could be kind of like peace but I also am getting a lot of lover vibes like it makes me think of like the archer, Cornelia Street, like this vulnerability of this love that she is so scared is so delicate and will break, like reputation lover era. This could be from that time period, but those themes like recur a lot over the last six years that she's been dating Joe. Like we do see that in folklore or even on Evermore with like Gold Rush where she is like, everybody wants this person. And I know Gold Rush is kind of fictional, but it's like everybody wonders what it would be like to love you. It sounds a lot like I'm highly suspicious that everyone who sees you wants you. I think there are some personal aspects to that. Um, what do I think it's gonna sound like? Maybe it will be kind of like the intention that Jack Antonoff and Taylor had on Lover of doing wedding songs with real instruments that would have been played at weddings in the 70s. I'm kind of getting that vibe. You know, maybe this will be a very immersive introduction into this retro 60s, 70s sound that I think this album will encompass. <laughs> It's so vague, but so like beautiful at the same time. So this could go one of two ways. It could be about the color maroon, or it could be like being marooned. Like it's also a verb. I'm trying to see if there's any other definitions of maroon, because I know Taylor loves to play with language. Maroon is also a noun, a castaway, a person who has been marooned. It's too vague, man, I don't know. 
It does give me red era vibes, of course, because maroon is a shade of red. Is it going to be some interesting exploration into the aftermath of the song called Red? Like maroon is more subdued, not as bright and burning. It's like maybe what she was left with after the relationship like exploded. Track twos are tricky because they could be something like Cruel Summer or they could be something like Champagne Problems. I'm leaning more towards a little bit melancholy. I feel like I'm leaning more towards a champagne Campaign problems type of routes. Anti-hero makes me think of the Archer, but it's gonna slap harder. A big problem I have with the Archer is just purely the production. I do really enjoy the lyrics and the concept. I really enjoy it live way more than the studio version because that beat hits a lot harder when she does it live. I mean, she's only done it live like a couple of times because of the pandemic, particularly the Archer live from Paris. That beat is so like, oh my God, I can't imagine being in that crowd and like having that steady beat like pulsing through you. I think it's really nice, but it just doesn't hit like at all in the studio version. So I'm hoping for something that is more energetic. I also have a feeling she's going to be taking different heroes from different pieces of literature and like comparing and contrasting herself with them because this is also another song that she did an Instagram reel about where she talked about it's going to be like very specific insecurities and we haven't really seen her get too specific. So I'm wondering if she's going to be like psychoanalyzing herself in comparison to actual heroes. And as far as which time period this is from, it gives me Speak Now vibes because like superhero, I don't think there's any other reason other than that. Or it could take a very quill pen lyric genre approach and maybe sound a little like something off Evermore. Like I think of Long Story Short. Yeah, I think it's gonna slap and I think it's gonna have some sort of literature references. Okay, track four, we have Snow on the Beach featuring Lana Del Rey. <laughs> Oh my God. So I'm from Oklahoma. The second I heard the title Snow on the Beach, I thought of the terrible ice storm we had in 2021 when my apartment flooded for the third time and there was snow all over the Gulf of Mexico, which was not correct. However, I think there were pictures of Taylor. If I find them, I'll put them up here. At some beach, there would be like snow on some beaches and that would be normal. And you wouldn't be like dying when you try to go into a building and warm up. So my mind immediately went to that, but I don't think that's what she's doing. Yeah, no, I don't think so. that's what she's doing. For a second, my brain went, wait, what if she does some kind of like crazy political thing that like criticizes Texan lawmakers? <laughs> no, I don't think she's doing that, especially not with Lana Del Rey. So then my brain went to like a beach that's supposed to have snow on it. It sounds so cute and quirky and fun. Like it makes me think of the 22 music video where they're all like running around outside and pushing each other around in shopping carts. Like I picture people running around on a beach like, oh my God, there's snow on the beach. And like everyone's, I don't know, I get like a chaotic vibe that makes me think of 22, like happy, free, confused, lonely, like, oh, all these emotions. <laughs> but then I remembered Lana Del Rey is on it. I don't know, as a track four, I don't think she's gonna have something too heavy because track five is right after it. And then I remembered again, Lana Del Rey, and I thought, snow, snow. Come on down to Florida, I got something for you. We could see the kilos on the keys, baby, oh yeah. He loves me with every beat of his cocaine heart. You know, um, I will literally shit a brick if Taylor Swift is singing about cocaine. I will lose it, okay? I was the kind of person who like was very stunned by the moon is high like your friends were the night that we first met. I've gotten very used to the alcohol references at this point, but cocaine would surprise me, but not from Lana. So it's like, this is a very conflicting thing. I feel like this song is gonna be about partying. You know, a good old boomery 1970s. <laughs> the way they partied back in the day. I feel like this album will be escapism kind of in and of itself in a way. If it's like a flashback to a certain genre, long forgotten or time periods of her life that were more, I guess, stable in the world. <laughs> Cause obviously Taylor is coming from a very privileged perspective. Like not a lot of things are affecting her firsthand, but there's a lot of chaos in the world. And maybe she's looking back on like the last 10 years kind of nostalgically for being able to have concerts and run around with your friends and party and like not feel so down about the news, I guess. I think Snow on the Beach could be an escapist moment, no matter what it is. And I feel like it could slap. Yeah, that's my final answer. So this maybe is from the 
speak now era as well like an anti-hero maybe it makes me think of never grow up is it a coming of age type of song it also made me think of the first line in growing pains by alessia cara i know they're not like friends friends but i know alessia performed with her on the 1989 tour the first line of growing pains is you're on your own kid you are and growing pains is entirely a coming of age like growing pains type of song i think we might get something like that we haven't seen anything like that since speak now it's gonna be sad maybe there's gonna be whammy bars and shit like dear john i don't know i'm so disturbed by the fact that i just have no idea what genre this actually is going to be everybody's getting fearless vibes from this i would agree but i also my brain immediately went to purple rain by prince if she's going for this retro genre that would kind of make sense i also read somewhere that like the first night her and joe got together it like rained all night or something you know so it could be a mix of like fearless types of visuals along with like a situation that happened around the lover reputation time period or something or maybe some lines that she wrote during that time period because obviously she got with joe before reputation even came out i don't know i'm getting really purpley vibes from this song which sounds like speak now but i don't mean purple in the sense of like albums i mean just purple from the name midnight rain it just sounds purple purple rain this one confuses me a lot. So we have song titles like Ready For It with the ellipses beforehand, and then we have So It Goes with the ellipses afterwards. I don't see many people talking about the parallel to So It Goes. I see a lot of people immediately referencing Ready For It. I think if anything, it might be a little more like So It Goes. It just sounds too vague and not very blunt. Like Ready For It is like, I think we got what we were expecting. <laughs> also, can we talk about how when the 1989 track list was released, everyone was losing it over style because after watching their relationship and people shipping them for that long and suddenly there's a track called fucking style. Oh my God, that like broke the internet. We don't talk about that enough. I feel like everybody's kind of forgotten. I can't believe there are people who didn't experience that, that moment before 1989 was released when you just knew there was gonna be a song called style and everyone was like shitting a brick. Question. There's a lot of questions in life. I just, I wonder if it's from the Reputation era purely because of the ellipses. I have no other reason to believe it's from the Reputation era. Well, listen, I had a submission in my everything that could possibly be happening with Midnight's video. Somebody said they think there will be like a marriage announcement on one of these songs. If anything, it's gonna be on question. Will you marry me? Like, I don't know, but it seems weird to have that as a track six. Like that person predicted it was going to be track 13, but I really don't think Mastermind is anything like that so i don't think we're really gonna get that on this album but what the hell other kind of question is like that good to like write a song about i don't know i really like the idea of like the night before the wedding and that's like a sleepless night it's like romantic and cute when we typically think of sleepless nights as devastating question what other questions that's all i got man that is all i got and maybe a so it goes type of sound but probably not because everything seems 70s <laughs> we have so little stuff to go off of this is the one I am the most excited for out of all of them. You can call me basic, I don't care. Is it about doing vigilante shit or is she calling someone a little vigilante shit? You know, is it an activity or is it a noun? So many questions. Has she written all she wants to say about the re-recordings master's issue? Cause this would be her taking matters into her own hands, being vigilant and enacting her own sense of justice, I guess. I hate that I don't have answers for you. I don't even have any good ones about that one. I think it's gonna be kind of harder. Like I think this will be one of the more rocky ones if there are any. It's giving me a reputation. <laughs> Um, a lot of people talk about the jewels she wore to the VMAs. People talk about the bathtub scene in the Look What You Made Me Do music video. I keep going back to lyrical parallels, like a never needy, ever lovely jewel, or you wear the same jewels that I gave you as you bury me. I'm leaning more towards the all too well alternative because that line seems more important to the overall theme of the song, while in My Tears Ricochet, it seems kind of like just a metaphor, but in all too well, it's like, the way she says jewel so powerfully, like she maybe felt like an object to this guy, Jake Gyllenhaal, like a trophy, be jewel. It makes me think of the Red Era. If anything, I think it's going to be from the Red Era. Ooh, shit, she could also take the routes of like nothing new kind of when she felt new and shiny. Ooh, she talks about that in the Miss Americana documentary. For a couple of years, you're new and shiny and fun and then you age 
people don't like women aging you lose that shine you rust i guess i don't know she could do a whole interesting thing about like precious metals or is it going to be like a mirror ball and all cute and i don't know if there's any like wedding parallels kind of like the bridge of lover maybe it'll be like you know i'm shining just for you but like maybe aimed more towards joe than to her like fans and audience she also sings things like I like shiny things, but I'd marry you with paper rings. So this is interesting that she's taking the extravagant route. Oh my God, I feel like I sound ridiculous right now. I'm <laughs> pulling so many things out of my ass. Either very, very romantically in love or feeling like you're some shiny new object to either the media or to a man. A lot of ways this could go. Okay, when I heard this one, I immediately thought of Looking for Alaska. One of my favorite books made me fucking sob. Basically, the book is kind of like from the male gaze of the main character, and he views this girl, Alaska, as like this amazing, beautiful person. He's so in love with her, but it's from his own perspective. Like, I think he's built up who she is in his head, and it's not actually what she is. But anyways, she like is very introspective and like deep, I guess, and she um, reads a lot and like ponders this question of like, will we ever escape? the labyrinth of suffering it's so teenage and angsty i think somebody wrote it i forgot what writer she was quoting but like or maybe no i think it was a school assignment that he had and he was relating it to her or something because she was all like beautifully damaged or whatever trope anyways that's like a huge like word in that book and it's really fucking sad i know taylor likes john green she's talked about the fault in our stars they have a shit ton of interactions from the 1989 time period there's a video i'll link below where she raves about john green and I wouldn't be surprised if Taylor wrote a song based on one of his books and then decided it didn't belong on the 1989 album for obvious reasons, but it's perfect for Midnight's because it's all about shit that keeps you up at night, as John Green books tend to do, particularly Looking for Alaska. I stayed up until 2am reading it and then stayed up for three hours more grieving it. After filming this, I researched just how pivotal the labyrinth is to this story. It's huge. It's like the main symbol. I hope I'm onto something. It may be a good idea to read it before Midnight's comes out. Or if you like TV shows, there's a limited series of the same name that is a really accurate adaptation. I think it's on Hulu. It's got great music and it destroyed my life all over again, even though I saw it coming. Fucked me up for weeks. It has an amazing soundtrack. There is a devastating cover of I Will Follow You Into the Dark. So yeah, she did say she wrote Carolina in the middle of the night all alone, so you know, maybe that's a hint at a book-inspired song also on Midnight's. Who knows? If she writes a Looking for Alaska song, I will pass away. I will- I- like, it's not happening. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to freaking handle that. I could barely handle the book. It could also be about like feeling lost. I don't know. That's the metaphor of the labyrinth, I guess. How do you sing the word labyrinth? I feel like that would be so ugly to sing. Is it gonna be one of those songs where she doesn't even say the title in the song? Labyrinth. Yeah, I don't fucking know. <laughs> but it's giving me folklore because I just cannot get the idea of looking for Alaska out of my head. The one we've all been waiting for. Now, do I think this confirms there is a Karma album? No, but I also think that this might hint at her paying attention to what we like to talk about on the internet, obviously, because she laughed in the reveal of this track. It also makes me wonder, you know, she always talked about like a 10 minute version of All Too Well and everyone was like, oh my God, give it to us, give it to us, give it to us. She gave it to us, which was very nice of her. But I also feel like the 10 minute version of All Too Well might've been like heavily edited because it just sounds so good and we don't even have that line that ended up in the lover diaries there we are again when you blew the candle out took this burning love and drove it right into the ground or something you know that's a line that's very much like okay i understand why she cut that out it's kind of like general and i have this feeling that the original 10 minute version of all too well that she like played in rehearsal like was ad-libbing it was not nearly as articulated and well written as the 10 minute version that we got i feel like that might have been heavily altered for Red Taylor's version. So because of that, I feel like she sees us talking about karma. I wouldn't put it past her at this point to like, you know, she wrote a song called Karma. She probably thinks it's funny. What if she writes an entire album called Karma and just like kind of pretends it was from 2016? And like, oh yeah, this was supposed to be TS6 all along, but like really she gets the idea from us. Cause if it doesn't exist, you know, we're feeding her ideas. I also think she got the idea of Midnight's maybe from that trending TikTok sound that was like all of the midnight, middle of 
the night, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., all of those. I feel like she's seen that sound and that's how she got this idea. So I think we gave her the idea for a track titled Karma, but also she gave us the idea to like take it and run with it because she mentions it in the man music video and all this stuff. Was she hinting at just this song title and we're all clowns? Or does she just let us pick her Easter eggs for her at this point? Anyways, I stayed up all night the other day watching the Midnight's Mayhem with me marathon, but I also was like passing out in between each one and I would have dreams about what the next one would be. <laughs> it was honestly a really fun experience and I feel like that's how she intended this to be consumed uh, because I fell asleep right after the karma announcement and I was like mind blown, but I was really tired. So I fell asleep until the next hour when she released the next one. And I dreamed that karma was about beef she had with Angelina Jolie. And that was interesting. I feel like, you know, back when 1989 came out, like an Out of the Woods was released, nobody knew about that accident she had with Harry Styles with the snowmobiles or whatever, for good reason, because now everybody is putting vehicular manslaughter on her. But like, that was something like a huge part of her life that nobody ever knew about at all. And could karma be something completely unexpected is basically what I'm asking. Could it be about some beef that we don't know about? I think that's why my brain came up with beef with Angelina Jolie, because literally I don't think their names have ever been put together in the same sentence. Like, will it be something that we just have no idea who it could be about? Also, I feel like people are guessing that this will be very reputation sounding. Like people are thinking maybe it's from like a, the Lost Karma album. And if it is, it's gonna be like rock sounding to go with the Bleachella style of the time. I think this just like further proves my own theory of like if karma exists, she's splitting it up into a bunch of different projects. Like maybe some of it will end up on Midnight's, some of it will end up as Reputation Vault Tracks, and some of it will end up as 1989 Vault Tracks. If that's the fucking title track from Karma, that's what's happening here. Like not all of these, I don't believe Midnight's is Karma. I just think maybe a couple of these are from a Karma album if it exists. We've talked about this. And I think this one could be maybe really vulnerable or maybe Karma that she has received in her life. It could just be something that we're not expecting at all. It could be a soft sound, an acoustic moment, or just about people we have never known her to be associated with. There's no telling. Or maybe it's just like about her fans. <laughs> That'd be cute and fun, I think. <laughs> but I don't really think that's what it's going to be. I think this will be a lullaby. I think about Safe and Sound, just maybe not like dark, because Safe and Sound is obviously about the Hunger Games and it's like the war outside your door keeps raging on. I think we're going to get another lullaby. We have to get a lullaby on this album, like it's midnight. But I think this one will just be like very, very sweet. I can't think of anything to compare it to because I don't think she's ever done like a genuine sweet lullaby really. Maybe some melodies reminiscent of folklore because a lot of those are very dreamy. I think of like August or Mirrorball. So this was the first one that was announced and immediately I pretty much knew my followers theory of a wedding announcement was probably just over <laughs> because I just can't see a song about the night before a wedding being called Mastermind. <laughs> Unless she's like really patting herself on the back for snagging Joe, which I <laughs> wouldn't put it past her. Maybe it's about how in love she is with songwriting and how she like knows she is a mastermind. Like she knows this is the thing she excels at. She wakes up in the middle of the night to write these songs. Maybe it's just kind of like a very artistically freeing moment where she discusses her love for songwriting. She's never written a song about like her favorite pastime, which is songwriting. And I think there's a way to do that in a really nice way. It could be that, you know, it could be what we're expecting to see on the song Karma, where it's like Scooter Braun and Scott Bruschetta are getting their karma because she's a mastermind. Like she is a marketing genius and she has such success with these re-recordings. There's a potential for that. Also, every time I try to think about what kind of music these would have, I just keep thinking of the Heim collaboration, Gasoline. I don't know why. I have nothing to go off of. This was my unhinged, completely shot in the dark guesses. I cannot wait to listen to this album. I think these are some of her best track titles ever. I'm so intrigued by like every single one. They're so concise and original and I'm just obsessed with them. I love how they look. I love how many like colors are mentioned. It's giving me a lot of visuals. Also, I understand that Taylor announced the Lana collab on Midnight's Mayhem with me, but why isn't that collab listed on the track list that's on the front of the album that she posted on Instagram? That section next to Snow on the Beach that says featuring Lana Del Rey in parentheses, is it going to be on the back of the album? I have a feeling Lana is not the only collab. If it was, she would be showing us a track list that includes features. I think there are more surprises in store. The whole thing is sus, like why aren't 
aren't you posting about the one collab that you revealed? Where is the cover art detailing this? We still don't know what collab Avril confirmed she has coming out this month. Now, I'm not trying to stir up expectations for something that won't happen. Personally, I don't care whether or not there are more collabs than Lana. I just can't help but have my guard up because what is this? Why aren't you showing us the featured artists? I'm so excited. And also, I've seen a trend on TikTok of people ranking Midnight's already in the order that they think they would rank the songs once they come out. It's all just like based on vibes because we know nothing. So I will put that up here, which song I think will be my favorite and the bottom one will be my least favorite, maybe. It's probably going to be so incorrect, but I wanted to participate, so here they are. I would love to see your own ranking of how you think you will end up ranking the songs, if that makes sense. Please leave those down in the comments. I wanna see what song you are most excited to hear and what song you think will be your favorite. I saw someone do this and rank your own your own kid at the very bottom. Like that is so bold to think you're not gonna like the track five. But yeah, this has been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed this album cycle. I like the drawn out aspects of it. We haven't had this since Lover. So like finally we get this like chaos that is all encompassing as opposed to like, you know, the Red Album or the Fearless Taylor's version album. We knew what was coming. So it was only like mild excitement. This is nice. This feels correct. I'm so excited to have new fall music to listen to. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Please leave me any requests you might have down in the comments. I will be reacting to Midnight's, of course. And yeah, if you want to follow me on my Instagram, it is right here. And if you want to follow me on my TikTok, that is right here. I will see you all next week for a book-related video of book recommendations you can read in a day. So perfect for all of you guys trying to get back into reading. And I hope you have an amazing day. Bye, guys.